coming to you again. Satan, we bind you from our hearts and minds. We bind you from these devices, and we command you in the name of Jesus to get behind us. We claim authority over you in Jesus' name. So, Father, we thank you and give you praise. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Thank God and amen. Amen. Are we tuned in? We are tuned in. We are tuned in. So welcome, 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 everyone, to another Wednesday night Bible study. I am Pastor G. Rodney King, the pastor of Mount Ararat Baptist Church here in North Las Vegas. I pray that everyone is doing well. You are staying safe. And as I do and I have been doing for the past four years since we've had this virus, I'm praying that everybody has gotten their vaccines as well as their boosters. You're staying safe. You're being vigilant about wherever you're going so that you can make sure that you protect yourself because it's still among us, people. Yeah. Other thing I want to admonish everyone is this is an election year. It is important that you get out and vote. So if you have not registered, Please, ma'am, please, sir, do so. Don't think that your vote does not count. Every vote counts. And you have no right to complain if you don't get out and vote. You have no right to say anything. So please, sir, please, ma'am, let's make sure that we protect our rights as citizens and we protect what our forefathers have sacrificed their life, that we might have this right to vote. So let's do that. Okay. Now, on our subject, we are talking about Faith's photo album. Faith's photo album. And you're going to get to take snapshots okay, to see where you are as well as where your faith is and if you want to increase in your faith. Now, we are still with our background scripture. We had Finished with Hebrews chapter 11, where now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Your faith will take the place of whatever it is you're believing for until the thing you're believing for manifests itself. And your, when somebody says, well, where's the proof? Your faith is the evidence. You're standing on your faith, believing that it's going to happen. That is your evidence, all right? And then we went to um, Mark. Right now we're in Mark. So I hope you have your Bibles because we're going to be talking about Mark. So I believe we left off, and I, I, I'm going to kind of go back because I, I said something last week, and I want to make sure that everybody understands what I was talking about last week. Is everything all right, Sister King? No, keep going. You still alive, don't worry about it. Can they hear me? Yeah, they can hear and see you. Because yes. I can see you doing like something was wrong. It's zooming in and out, don't worry about it, they can hear you. Is the camera turned right? It is, they can see you. Okay. They can hear you. All right. So now, we had talked about uh, Jesus had went into Jerusalem. He made his triumphant entry in there. He, he He's coming into town. He... He's riding in on his donkey. The people are throwing their clothes, their coats, in the roadway. They cut down palm trees. It's where we get Palm Sunday from. And they're crying out, Hosanna, which is praise God in the highest, son of David, and all of that stuff. These same people that are saying Hosanna eventually are going to turn on you. Same people because of the Jewish leaders. So now... We started talking about Jesus had left Jerusalem and he's on his way back to Bethany, all right, where he was lodging for the evening because it's now night. The next morning, he is getting ready to go back to Jerusalem. So he sees a fig tree afar off. And because he was hungry, he went over to the fig tree because he saw leaves on the fig tree. Mm -hmm. And with a fig tree, the fruit comes out about the same time as the leaves do. And because this fig tree was on, can I say, public land, mm -hmm. 
It wasn't, it didn't belong to anybody. It wasn't on private land. It was on the roadside, roadway, which meant every traveler had a right to go and pick fruit off of it. So when Jesus walked over there to hopefully to get some figs because he was hungry, he found out that there was nothing but leaves and no fruit. So what he did was he cursed the fig tree. And in verse 11, it says that no one eat fruit from you ever again. We're in chapter 11 of um, Mark. We're in chapter 11 of Mark. And I just got through reading verse 14. So when Jesus didn't find any fruit on that fig tree, he said, let no one eat fruit from you ever again. And it says, and his disciples heard him. That's important. We're gonna, we're, gonna, we're gonna prove that. Now, there have been some people that say, oh, Jesus was mean. He cursed that fig tree because he didn't have fruit on it. That's not the intent. Jesus always used things as an object lesson for his disciples to learn something. So again, let's reiterate why he cursed that fig tree. We know that it was the season for gathering figs. It had not yet come. There was things. So when he saw this fig tree by the wayside, he went over to get some fig fruit off of it, but it wasn't there. And again, as I said earlier, everybody had a right to this fig tree because it was on public land, on the wayside, on the roadside. So even though it wasn't time, he went over there thinking it was, he cursed the fig tree. Now, why did he do that? Well, here's first, first of all, his intent. He, that he was talking about the Jewish nation. He was using the fig tree as an illustration of the Jewish nation. So number one, the profession of true religion. The Jewish people thought that they were truly religious. Right. Okay? And in graphic. Yeah, that too. Okay. Number two, Consider themselves a particular people of God. It's just you just said, Sister King. They thought that they were privileged and idle because they were of the seed of Abraham, which means that they thought they were better than everybody else. Okay, so they considered themselves to be a particular people of God and despised and all other races. They looked down on everybody else. They disapproved of everybody else because they thought they were a special, peculiar people of God. He chose them. Uh, he chose them. Mm -hmm. So they thought they were better than everybody else. Number three, they're really only hypocrites. Why is that? This is nothing but the profession of religion and nothing to back it up. Leaves on a tree. Just leaves. The fig, the fig tree had leaves, but no fruit. Their religion, even though they profess to be have a true religion, they were just really hypocrites. Mm -hmm. Planners, putting on the smiley face, so to speak. Mm -hmm. Okay, but they were hypocritical. All right. Third thing, all conduct towards this tree is to be considered as symptomatic of the treatment and final tradition which was to come upon the hypocritical and ungodly Jewish nation. Okay? So, it was the perfect time for them to have some born some fruit. Why is that? Because Jesus had been preaching the doctrine of repentance and salvation among them for over three years. So that means it's time for them to start producing some fruit. Mm -hmm. The Bible says that some are going to bring 30, 60, 90, 100 fold. They weren't bringing in anything. They should have been bringing some forth some fruit by now. And not only bring forth some fruit, bring forth some good fruit. It's more on burden on the people than the Ten Commandments initially was intended to do. Right. Right. Okay, they were making it hard for people to follow the Ten Commandments. They kept going. They, they kept 
adding to it. They kept adding Making their own them. stuff to it. So it's like they kept adding their own little stuff to it. So they expanded the Ten Commandments almost to a hundred. Right. right. And Jesus even told us that wait a minute, you put more on the people than they can bear, and you ain't even keep it. Right. Whatever they want, little, little dog. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> so because Jesus had been there and been in Jerusalem, because he said he came to his own first. And his only received him not. But he came to the Jewish nation first. He didn't go to the Gentiles. He came to the Jewish people and they refused to accept him for who he was. Because he didn't come riding on the big white horse. Yeah. With a gold crown and purple gold and all that stuff, because he came riding in on a donkey with just some lowly rags, looking like Mike Tyson. So to speak. <laughs> just came to do my job and I'm going home. Right. So they didn't accept him for who he was. All right. So they should have been producing fruit, not only fruit, but good fruit. Mm -hmm. The time was at hand in which God would require fruit, good fruit. And if it did not produce it, the tree should be hewn down by the Roman axe. Mm -hmm. It's withering away because Jesus cursed it and said, nobody's going to eat from you anymore. It's withering away. The final and total ruin of the Jewish state by the Romans, which actually did happen. They destroyed the nation as well as the temple. Their most sacred building with one stone on top of another. Okay? That was their most sacred building, the Jewish yeah. temple. Yeah. Okay? That's where everybody uh, from all over came there, especially like the, for the day of Jubilee or week of Jubilee or whatever. Right? Yes. Yeah. Everybody migrated to yeah. that temple. Right. Passover. 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 They came from all over yeah. The known world at that time to celebrate the Passover. Okay, this is what Jesus is here for. Mm -hmm. It's the Passover, exactly. the sacred day of the Jews. Exactly. They celebrate the day that the deaf angel passed over and they were set that's free. That's right. They were set free from Egyptian bondage. Yes. And that's why Jesus was going to be here. So this is why it had to happen this way. He was going to be the sacrificial lamb. He was going to be the sacrificial lamb for the Paschal lamb. So, and, and this was during that time of the celebration. So people were coming from all over. It's all the known world. Okay, it's withering away. The final total ruin of the Jewish state by the Romans. His cursing of the fig tree was not occasioned by any resentment and being disappointed at not finding fruit on it. But to point out to his disciples the wrath which was coming upon the people who had now filled up their indignation and their iniquity because they would not heed the Son of God and refused to accept him. And because of that, eventually it was going to happen that the Jewish nation was going to be destroyed. Okay? So that's where we were. So now I'm going to skip down. I'm going to skip down to verse 20. 11, 20. Are you with me? Okay. So it says, now in the morning, they passed by. They saw the fig tree dried up from the roots. You don't have to read that out of the book. As they passing by, they saw the fig tree. And it was dried up from the roots. Mm -hmm. Jesus, they cursed it the day before. Okay. Peter, remembering, said to him, Rabbi, or the teacher, that's what Rabbi means. Look, the fig tree which you cursed has withered away. Remember, they heard him when he cursed it. And now Peter remembered and said, look, man, the fig tree that you cursed yesterday is withered up. There's a lesson in this. Watch it, watch it, watch it. Verse 22. And Jesus answered and said to him, faith in God. Mm -hmm. And 
constant faith in God. We have the God kind of faith. And what, what did he mean by that? That faith in God. Because when God said something, it happened. When God spoke something, happened. All the creation, God spoke into existence. Let there be. Let there was. Let there be light. Let there be stars. Let there be grass. Let there be herbs. Let there be animals. Let there be everything God spoke into existence except for man. The Bible says he scooped out and created man out of the dirt of the dust of the ground. He didn't speak saying let there be man. He formed man. He created man. But everything else he spoke. So when Jesus says have faith in God, have the same kind of faith that when God says something, it's going to happen. Days, days before it dried up. Oh, oh, yes, right. But there's a reason why he said that. So look at verse 22 says, For surely, I say to you, whoever sins to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea, and God thou in his heart. That's an important part right there. And does not doubt in his heart. But believe that those things which he said will be done, he shall have whatever he says. And does not doubt in his heart. So when you say something, you have to believe. Now, here's a question for you. Did Jesus talk about a literal mountain? Whatever that's huge in your life. It's what? <laughs> Just an analogy, just an allegory. He's not literally talking about a mountain. Right. Right. But it's Jesus telling us. So, I mean, we had this conversation that I was talking about it was a literal mountain. Yeah. And, and, and others, like your answer, <laughs> nothing in your life. You know, yeah. the top of the you, you're absolutely right. And Jesus said it because Jesus he controls nature. Yeah. Just like when he was on the storm tossed sea and he was in the back of the boat sleeping. Yeah. And he told the disciples, let's cross over to the other side. Mm -hmm. And he was so confident that they were going to cross over to the other side that he went in the back part of the boat and went to sleep. Mm -hmm. And while he was asleep, it's, the Bible says that a storm came on, yeah. which happened on the Sea of Galilee quite often. It's just like here in Vegas. We get this wind that comes all of a sudden, any given day. We can get a wind that's windstorm that comes and just blows everything all over the place here. I find that out. Well, that's just the way it was in Galilee. That wind would come down from that mountain and just upset the, even the ocean, the sea. And so Jesus is in the back of his back, chilling. You back there chilling. And the disciples say, the master, don't you care if we perish? The boat is to turn over. Jesus said, well, why are you waking me up? I said, we're going to the other side. Where's your faith? Right. Yeah. Oh, you yeah, little faith. Where, where is your faith? But I mean, he just chill and relax. I'm like, all right, he's cool. I'm cool. <laughs> <laughs> But notice this, this Jesus is speaking to his disciples. Because he said, whosoever shall pray. He didn't say if I said it. He said, whosoever. Whoever says in his mouth, just speaking of himself, he's now referring to the disciples. Be removed and be cast into the sea. And does not out in his heart. So he's talking to his disciples. He's teaching them a lesson. But believe that those things which he says will be done, he will have whatever he said. Now, removing mountains and rooting up mountains are things that are generally used to signify the removing and conquering of great difficulties. Getting through perplexity 
So many of the rabbis were termed rulers of the mountain. Mm. Why? Because they were dexterous in removing difficulties, solving cases of conscience and problems that people were having. Mm -hmm. So they were called rulers of, of mountain. Mm -hmm. So Jesus is not talking about a literal mountain. He could have done it, but he's not telling his disciples they could do it. Yes, Dale. Well, no. Well, mountains will turn into molehills. That's what you mean. Yeah. Yes, we can. Can we have this discussion? Sure, we can. The literal mountain. The only reason I, that some of the class members that I'm looking about this big tree. See, Jesus had just cursed the big tree. He did that, and it 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 withered. Now you turn around and say, if you want a mountain to go into the sea, all you have to do is believe it's going to happen. So if he had to say that you guys want this fig tree to come back, are you sure you have to have faith? If he's telling them about nature, he did something with nature. We know he can do it, but it almost sounds like he's telling them you can do stuff with nature. No, there's nobody that I want to believe that. No, let's not confuse the issue. The reason he cursed the fig tree was to be emblematic of what was going to happen to the Jewish nation. Yeah. It had nothing to do with saying that they could bring that tree back to life. Okay, so I shouldn't have said that because it's confusing. That's what I was trying to say. Period. I'm trying to say he did an action with a fig tree, which was nature. And he turned around and told them they could do something in nature if they didn't doubt. Yeah, but he wasn't talking about, I know that there's been conversations about that, but he wasn't talking about them telling a literal mountain. And the reason that that was a 50 50 thing in the class was because it was a literal tree. That didn't be true. They thought it was, they, most half the class thought it was a literal mountain, and others thought it was just big problems and perplexities. That, that's really what it is. Wow. Well, that, that's really what it is. I don't know which half, but believe that, but that was the half that was right. I knew I was the one thing. Yeah, I know you were. <laughs> I, I know you were. Well, there's nothing wrong with that's what you want to believe. But can you imagine you being able to tell a, a literal mountain to pick itself up and throw itself into the sea? That requires no, tremendously great faith. That, that requires tremendously, let me put a superlative on there, tremendously great faith for you to tell them, these mountains right here in Vegas, right? tell that mountain, get up, get into the sea. First of all, we ain't got no sea around here anyway, but just to say that, that would require, oh man, if they, somebody knew you could do that, believe me, they could come looking for you to heal everything. Yeah, but I, I don't really think Jesus literally meant, even though he, 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 listen, this is what Jesus meant. He used the saying of a mountain as an object lesson. No, and I understand now. So I he, he's he talking about great problems, great perplexities, great difficulties that you have in your life. Yeah. If you truly tell it to bear. Yeah. If you truly tell it to disappear and you don't doubt what you say in your heart, it will happen. It is. It really is a good discussion about faith. It is. And, and, and I'm trying to think in my mind, I'm going back, what man did any nature thing other than Jesus? Even when the, everything that happened in nature, God had to tell me, this is sad, yeah. do this, do that. But the man had never, since Adam, had any control over nature. No. And, and what you're referring to is when Moses lifted up the serpent. When, sir, when Moses lifted up the serpent, anyone who was bit by a snake, if when they, Moses lifted up the serpent and they looked at the serpent, they believed that they would be healed. They would be healed. That's why, if you notice, when you go in the doctor's office now, yeah. You see the serpent, serpent, serpent. That, that's where that comes from. Yeah. That comes from the, the from when Moses had the serpent on the pole. Right. So when we go in the doctor's office today, we'll see those serpents, mm -hmm. but that's where they come from. A lot of people don't know that. Yeah. 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 
Yes. Well, the same serpent was step Moses. Yes. It turned into a serpent and ate up all the Pharaoh's magician serpents. Because that was the why? Because it was the power of God behind that step. Right. That's overmatch over everything. And, 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 and Moses was demonstrating, I'm not coming on my own. I'm coming in the name and power of God. And I'm going to show you because I'm going to throw my staff down and my staff is going to eat up all your snacks. Show you there's more powerful than your magicians. I keep mm -hmm. wanting to say musicians. Magicians mm -hmm. and soothsayers and stuff. And so it shows that the power of God in Moses' staff was more powerful than their. Mm -hmm. Yes, Look, without a doubt. Without a doubt. So, so let's make a be clear that it's talking about conquering great difficulties and perplexities in our life. And because we all have them. Let's be for real. We all have difficulties and perplexities. Sometimes it seems like it's overwhelming us. It seems like we just don't have an answer. Lord, help me. How am I going to get out of this? Jesus is saying, if you say to your problem, be removed, and don't doubt it in your heart that what you say is going to come to pass. It will come to pass. Will it happen instantaneously in that fig tree? Maybe. It may. It may. It may happen instantaneously or it may even take some time. We don't know because God is behind us. Or if the kids say, God got my back. He knows what we need. And how to fix it. Yeah. Go ahead. When we go through the retreat every day, you know, the prayer retreat. Yes. We pray for stuff and we put stuff in the prayer jar that never fills up. This is this is miraculous. Anyway, before we leave the mountain, people are testifying to the, whatever it was they prayed about has been answered. Some child called and said, Oh, this happened, or they found out that. Something with whatever it is they were praying for, they could testify to before we leave that mountain. Mm -hmm. And we, you talking about within two days, not all of them, but a lot of them. Yeah. Yeah. Prayer for answer in them. Yeah. So it can happen instantaneously or it could take time. What you have to believe is no matter how long it takes, it's going to happen. Whether it happens right now or it happens a week from now or a month from now or whenever it happens. You can, and then until it happens, you just keep saying, confessing that it's going to happen. You keep thanking God that it's going to happen. Now, I, I've heard people even say this. Well, you ask God for something one time and you don't ask him anymore. Because that proves you don't have faith. Now, the Bible says, what? No, first of all, let's start at the beginning. It says, seek. Seek and you shall find. Seek and keep on seeking. Huh? It says, what? Knock. And keep on knocking. So you don't just do it one time. If you do it again, you thank God. And at the end, you say, thank you, because I know it's going to happen. And I think people say that because usually people go back. Whatever they went into psyche things, you know, all of you believing? You believe it. It may not have happened yet, but you still believe it. And you're still thanking God for it. I think so you ask, you you ask, you seek, and you still and knock, and you keep on doing this until whatever it is you're believing for happens itself. I have three sons. I started praying for sons. We say, well, how do you know you're gonna have a son? I said, because I pray for it. Well, you don't know it's going to happen. I, yes, I do. You may not, but I do. Mm -hmm. I believe it's going to happen because mm -hmm. I pray for specifically for sons. And I believe my faith was my substance. My faith was my evidence until they were born. Mm -hmm. Now, everybody else can doubt, but it says as long as you don't doubt right. in your heart. So, what am I telling you? Be careful who you tell some things to. Because you may have some, as the kids say, you may have some haters. You may have some doubters. 
You may have some naysayers. You may even have people praying against you. You believe in God for a job or a promotion on your job or whatever, a house, a car, whatever. Be careful who you tell because there may be some people saying, I'm angry and I'm going to pray against that. You Believe me, you got some haters out there. It is. Those people are envious. Yes. Oh, so let's get back to the So this is what Jesus said. This is the sense in which our Lord is using these words that we can ask for whatever it is and believe that it will happen. Yes. So, not what I was doing. Excuse me. <laughs> okay, Dale. <laughs> Okay, listen to this. He that has faith, he that has faith will get through every difficulty and perplexity. He who has, he or she, he says he is talking about a man, mm -hmm. shall get through every perplexity. Mountains shall become molehills mm -hmm. and plains before him. Mm -hmm. Now, a molehill is not that big, is it? Mm -hmm. So your problem, although it may be monumental, like a mountain, yeah. it will become a molehill mm -hmm. and a plain. It will slowly start to vanish and disappear. Mm -hmm. It won't look as big as you thought it was. But notice the precursor. He who has faith and believe. So now here we're going to get to the real nitty gritty in verse 24. The real nitty gritty. Mm -hmm. Therefore, I say to you, what things you ask when you pray, believe you receive them, and you will have them. Sister King, read that. For this reason, I tell you, whatever you ask for in prayer, believe, trust, and be confident that it is granted to you, and you will get it. Based what I just said, yes, Dale. I heard the word in another scripture that says, Surety is certainty to the maximum. Yeah, that's confident. That's confident. That's confident, so I won't go there in a minute. Based on what I just told you, if you say to this mountain, take say to your problem, and you don't doubt in your heart. Mm -hmm. So, based on that, it says, Therefore, or for this reason, I am telling you, whatever you ask for in prayer, whatever you ask for, believe, trust, and be confident. Put your finger there. Because 1 John 5, 14 and 15 says what? Nobody remembers it off the top of their head? Well, let's turn to it because I don't want I can tell you, but I want you to turn to it. First John 5, 14 and 15. First John 5, 14 and 15. Uh -huh. Yes, I want you to yeah, wait till everybody get it. Okay, Sister K, you read it and I'm going to stop you. And this is the confidence. Stop. This is the assurance. Mm -hmm. I state this. This is the assurance, the title D. Yeah. This is the confidence that we have in him, is what it says, right? Mm -hmm. Him in God. Mm -hmm. We put our confidence in our employers. We go to work every day, believing that at the end of the week, I've said this numerous times, that he's going to pay us at the end of the week. Nobody goes to work on Monday and gets paid on Monday. Isn't that right? Mm -hmm. Mostly? Yeah. What job do you know when you go to work on Monday? Who? <laughs> Even my officiating, I do a game every day and I don't get paid. Oh, yeah, that's that's totally different. Yeah. I'm, I'm talking about a regular job. You get paid once a week, you get paid every two weeks or once a month, like educators, right, right, right. like myself. You get paid once a month. But I go to work every day believing that whenever I'm supposed to get paid, I'm going to get paid. 
because I have confidence in my employer mm -hmm. that he's going to do his part and pay me for coming and doing my part. So this is the Bible said that this is the confidence that we have in him. If we can put our confidence in man who might let us down, then how can we can't put our confidence in God? Go ahead. And this is the confidence we have in him. Mm -hmm. We are sure that if we ask anything, make any request according to his will in agreement with his own plan, he listens and hears us. Stop. Now let's go back and read that a little bit again. Mm -hmm. Read that again. Okay. It says the privilege of which we have in him. We in him. In him. In God. This is the privilege. Yes. Because the Bible tells us we can come boldly to the throne of grace. Take mercy and find grace to help in the time of need. So we can come boldly. We don't have to go, oh, goody, whimper it up. No, we can come boldly and say, you are my father. And I'm your child. And I'm putting my faith and confidence. I'm standing on your word. I'm standing on your promises. That's boldly, not arrogantly. Let's make a difference. It's not arrogantly like I can order God around, but I have so much boldness, so much confidence in him because I'm his child and I have righteousness. Yeah. Woo! I have righteousness. I have right standing with him. So I can go to him just like I can go to my earthly father. Yeah. And what does it say? It says, if you can go and ask your earthly father for something, and when he would give you a serpent, he would give you what you asked for. So now if you could do, what's going on? <laughs> so now if you can go to your earthly father and you have the boldness to go to your earthly father and ask him for something, how can you can't have that same confidence in going to your heavenly father? And the boldness is as you go and, and ask and he delivers you. You get bolder. As you develop your relationship with God, that intimate relationship with God, you have a personal intimate relationship with your parents, don't you? We all do. You go to you when you go to your mother and father, you go in with the confidence that, well, I'm a child, I should be able to go and ask you. You may not always get it because your parents say, no, you don't need that, right? You don't deserve that. You didn't earn that or whatever. But wait a minute. Hold on. Hold on, Tanisha. Sometimes God will tell you no, too. He will. He will. He, yeah. he, everything ain't always yes, 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 yes. Sometimes God will say no. No, you don't have, you can't handle it right now. You don't need it right now. I'm not going to give it to you right now. Sometimes it's no, sometimes he says, I'm not giving it to you, period. Don't we, you come back and ask me. And then sometimes he say, not now. Yeah. It's a delay, but delay is not denied. Sometimes it's not, you're not ready for it. Right, you're not ready to receive it. You're not ready, you can't handle it. Yeah. Listen, if my father, if my father, Owns the cattle on a thousand hills. I said this so many times. He stopped counting the cattle and started counting the hills because it was just too many cattle. Mm -hmm. If he owns the cattle on a thousand hills and the silver and gold belongs to him, which means he's wealthy. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a difference between being rich and wealthy, right? Mm -hmm. Shaq is wealthy, rich. rich. But the man who pays him the is wealthy. Is wealthy. Yeah. All those basketball players that making millions of dollars, they're rich, but the man who's paying them is wealthy. He owns the money to give him. Our God is wealthy. He owns everything. What can you give God? What can we give God? A what? Yeah, but I mean, materially. There's nothing we can give him because he already owns it. That's like Satan trying to tell Jesus, if you bow down to me, I'll give you all the kingdoms of the world to, to be. How are you going to give me something that's already mine? <laughs> wait, 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 wait. What do you offer me that I don't already have? I'm the creator of the universe. 
You're going to tell me you're going to give me the kingdoms of the world if I bow down to you, but I already own them. So that ain't no big deal. That's no enhancement for me to worship you. My point is this. We have the confidence because he's our father. We have the boldness because we he's our father. And we could go to him because he's our father. And we don't have to go whimpering, whining, like something like we don't have the but you gotta have that relationship with him. Yeah. The prime thing is saying he said a lot of times God tell us no because we just ask because we saw somebody else with because we asked the myth. Yes. We ask him upon our own lust, the Bible says. It's so true. Yeah. yeah, we ask him upon our own lust because somebody else had it and we want it too. What's that old what's that old saying? What's that old saying? Following the Joneses. We we following the Joneses. Not Brother Jones, I'm not talking about you. You know, we we, we following the Joneses. You want it because somebody else got it, but you don't know how they obtained it. And you don't know if they're taking it legally of them selling drugs or doing something else to get it. And did they have a right relationship with God? Because let me tell you something. Let me say it the right way. We like crabs in the jaw. As soon as one starts climbing up to the top, somebody starts pulling them back down again. I'm like this, and I always prayed I'd never be like that. I don't care what you get. I hope God blesses you. Mm -hmm. I'm not envious or jealous of any person. God bless you and keep on blessing you. And who knows? Maybe you open the door and help me get something too. But I, I don't. I don't want to be that kind of person where I'm jealous or envious of you because you got you a brand new car. You absolutely. You should rejoice with them. But I'm not going to go out and put myself in debt because you got a brand new car. I don't know how much money you make it. You could maybe afford to buy, go buy you, and maybe you've been saving up your money to buy a new car, but you want to get it just cause I, that's an old saying, keeping up with the Joneses. Yeah, but whatever we ask, we should be in line with the word. You know, we shouldn't be asking for nothing crazy. I mean, you, you know. what, let's go back to that. What it says? Let me finish reading what that says. Said, that if he has anything, they can the there, stop right there. Okay. So now, when we go to him, we got to make sure that our prayers are in line with his will for us, for you. Okay, are you asking him because you really want it and you really desire to have this? Or are you asking because somebody else has it and you just want to try to keep up with them? If you what? First of all, no. First of all, no, 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 no. He said, first of all, if you delight yourself in me, then I'll give you the desires of your heart. So you got to, first things first, you got to be delighted in him to get the desires of your heart. All right, I'll have to use this with the king. I love being around my wife because I love her, like being in her company, like going on vacations with her, stuff like that. Somebody you don't want to be around, somebody you don't get delight from, you're going to avoid them. You're going to stay away from them. Somebody's causing you trouble, you ain't going to be around that person. But when you delight yourself in somebody, you want to be close to them. You want to be in their presence. So the Bible is telling us when you delight yourself in the Lord, you're going to want to spend time with him and be in his presence. And you know what? God knows when you delight in him. Thank you, Sister King. <laughs> so when you delight yourself in the Lord, he says, then he will give you the desires. So that goes beyond just your needs. That could encompasses your wishes and wants. So God just does not just give us our needs, but he will also give us our wishes and wants. But you got to do first things first. You got to delight yourself in him. Then it said that if you pray according to his will, no, what else does it say? Finish reading that. Oh, you lost it? No. If you pray according to his will. In agreement with his own plan, he listens to and hears us. So when you're praying in line with his will, he listens and 
Now, there's a difference between hearing and listening. I'm looking at y'all. Y'all looking at me. Because you know what I'm getting ready to ask. Yeah, what's the difference? What's the difference between hearing and listening? No, it's not. Dale. It's more than that. You can listen. You, have, you guys hear the car going by? Yeah. You hear it, right? Yeah. You're hearing it. But when you, when you what are you doing right now when I'm talking? Listening. You're listening. I'm taking Why are you doing that? What? You are there's something before that too. That's that's one part of it. No, that's one part of it. It starts with the F. Hey, focus. There. Yeah. there it is. Yeah, you're focused. I can hear everything that's going around, but I'm focused on you. I'm not worried about like hearing the bars. Exactly. Cars, you got it. Going by. When you are yeah. listening to somebody, you are focusing and paying attention to them. So now you're distinguishing between the noise you hear out there and, the, and my voice. I hear the truck go by, but I'm not focusing on that truck. I hear, I heard it, but it, it's not, it don't have my attention. So God say, uh, I'm listening, and if it's according to my will, I can I hear you and I'm Okay. Oh, okay. It's focused. It's a focus. Y'all getting enlightened. Y'all getting enlightened today. No extra charge. <laughs> No extra charge. Okay. Okay. Because remember, God has billions of people. He, he can hear everybody's voice at once. But is he really listening? Is he focusing and paying attention to everybody and all of everybody's needs? He says he will listen and he will hear and listen. When you are listening to somebody, you're not being distracted by something else. And so the king knows this. When you want to talk to me, she knows not to say something when I'm trying to watch the Lakers. Oh, goodness. Oh, Lakers. Not the right time. Not the right time. Baby, I'm watching the game. It's the fourth quarter. Two minutes left in the game, and they down by four points. Can it wait? Do you want those boys to eat? Focus, listening means that you are focusing and you're paying attention to the person. Right. We need to focus and pay attention to what God is telling us. A lot of times we're so busy talking and asking God for something, but we're not listening to him. So we need to listen more to what he's telling us. Because sometimes God is trying to keep us out of trouble. We are hard-headed, pumping my head up against the wall. <laughs> Sister Jackson. I'm repeating the word. Is that how we listen? We are, because you know why? Because we're going to meditate on when we, when you, what, what do you do when you read the Bible? You what? And hope that the Holy Spirit will illuminate it to you. Okay, so, and, and God even tells you, put me in remembrance of my word. Not that he's seen now or old and suffered from old timers. Because he already knows what's in his word, but he wants to make sure you know. And if you can repeat it to him, that means you've been meditating on it. And you put it in your heart. What did he tell us? What does he tell us? What did he tell he told uh Joshua? He said, You meditate on my word day and night. So we got when we read the scripture, don't just say, well, I'm hurry up trying to read the scripture, or I'm trying to hurry and read the Bible in a year, but you're not really focusing on what you read. There's a there's there's a word in Psalms that says Selah. C-L-A-H. Selah. That means after you read that portion, pause, meditate, and think about what you read. That's what it means. Don't go to the next part. Pause. Think about and meditate on what you just read and let it become in you. Because see, here's what we got to do. We put the word in us. So when we need the word, the word will come back out of us. Go ahead. 
Well, pray for it. Pray first. You read it, pray about it. Lord, illuminate this to me. What, what, what is your word saying? We know who he wrote it to. And that's what we know. We know who it wrote, they wrote it to. But how does it apply to me today in today's time? Grab your book and look for the answers because you only got a certain time to take that test. It's the same thing when testing time comes, which is going to come when the mountains come and all these other different little things. When testing time comes, we'll be able to just move, move. exactly get rid of them mountains without even having to run to nobody and something. Just bring that word back to us because sometimes you ain't going to be able to go run and get your Bible. You better have it already in your heart. Anybody remember seeing the book of Eli? Mm -hmm. The book of Eli, it just be real quick synopsis. There was no more Bibles, but Eli had memorized the whole Bible from Genesis to Revelation. When he finally got to his destination. He told that man, he said, you write down everything I say word for word. And he quoted the whole Bible. Now, I know that's Hollywood and that's make-believe, but the point of the fact of the matter is he had memorized the whole Bible from in the beginning to the last verse in the Bible in Revelation. And he was able to reduplicate the Bible because there were no more Bibles. But it shows you the fact of the matter is he had memorized the whole Bible. Now, I'm pretty sure, as much as I know about it, I can't remember every first verse. But I, I keep keep reading. The more I read, oh, there, that comes familiar. The more I hear, it comes familiar. So the more I read, the more I hear, the more familiar it becomes, and the more I'm putting in me. That's what Sister Jackson is talking about. The Holy Ghost gives me utterance. Yes, God did give it to him. He didn't say it in the movie because they didn't want to give credit to God, but we know it, it was. It will, it, he, he will, the Holy Spirit will illuminate God's word to you. And you may get something different out of it than Sister Jackson, than Sister Revia, than Tanisha, than Dale, than myself. You, if, but you know what? This is, all could be right. It cannot, but you're getting a different revelation. And that's why we should come together because what God may reveal to you may be something else you reveal to somebody else and y'all put it together. That's what I tell my students. I say, you guys form study groups. Get three or four people and you start study groups and quiz each other because what you don't know, somebody else may know. And when they tell you, now you know it. And what they don't know, you tell them and they know it and you all helping each other. And that's why that's for Satan not the ascending of ourselves together. Because what something may happen in your life, it may strip me because I may be going through that down the road. Yeah. Yeah. And it's going to help me down the road. And you say, I remember Sister King was going through that. What, what happened with her? Yeah. Yeah. Dale. Yes. You said even if you Queen Jassy says that a three chord is harder to break in one Cord by itself. Yes, I got a few more minutes. So we know. Did we finish? We didn't finish. Go to fifteen. We didn't read verse fifteen. We we didn't read verse fifteen. Okay. This is all part of our Bible study. This is all part of our faith. Yes. Okay. Now the word says that if we know, but I, I like to change that to say since we know that he's listening to us. Since we know that when we go to God, he's going to listen to us. He hears what we're saying. He's paying attention. He's focusing on you at that particular time. He's focusing on you. Go ahead. Since we know he hears us and listening to us. Positively. 
also know with better and absolute knowledge that we have granted that we have granted us as our present possession the request made of him. So we know that since he's listening to us, whatever we're going to him and asking him for, he's going to grant it. There's a saying that God said it. Oh, I, I believe it. And that settles it. God said it. I believe it. That settles it. That means that when I go to God, I know he's listening to me and he's going to give me an answer. I'm going to have what I have. That goes back to Hebrew, excuse me, Mark, when Jesus said, whatever you ask for in prayer, you believe that you receive it and you shall have it. Because this is the confidence that we have in him. And we're praying to him. And so when I go and ask him something, I, and let me add this to the one that was a little caveat. I am not going to believe later on sometime down the road. I'm going to believe it when I'm praying for it right then and there, right at that particular time. I believe it by faith that I have what I'm praying for. I have the manifestation of it. But I believe it right there when I pray, because it says, and when you pray, believe that you receive it. When? When you pray. Go on. And it manifests itself right then and there. Now, you may not see the manifestation immediately. We talked about that earlier, but when you said it, it was done. It was okay to. Um, oh, God, that mercy just get me. The angel came to, to not Joseph. He said, We heard, heard your prayers. God heard your prayers 21 days ago. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Yeah, but the king of Persia meant Satan was blocking me. But your prayers were heard 21 days ago. Who was it? No, no. No. Goodness gracious. Got a mental block right now. But anyway, y'all know what I'm talking about. But 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 Gabriel came and says, Your prayers was so fair. I just I thought of it and went away. And, and, and your prayers were heard 21 days ago, but the king of Persia was blocking me, blocking me from getting to you. Was it Daniel? Okay, let me just see it. Before she can say it, I, Daniel. I, I, was, I can see the D, but I couldn't see the rest of it. It was Daniel. Your prayers were heard 21 days ago. It's just it was, there was a blockage. So sometimes, Denisha, go back to what you were saying. Sometimes God hears our prayers. We may not get the answer because there may be a roadblock. Satan may be trying to block us, some demon, or who knows? Maybe God just wants you to wait. Want you to wait. See if you got enough patience and faith to wait on him to give you the answer. Just like with Daniel. We can't see it. We can't see it. I'm trying to remember. I got so much going on in my head. I remember when 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 the servants was told his. He says, "You can't see all the angels is up there on the mount. You can't you can't see it spiritually. You can't see it. Uh, but there were angels up there saying they're ready to fight." In the so we got a guardian angel. I don't know if y'all believe that or not, but we got a guardian angel. Well, we got one definitely assigned to us. We got a guardian angel to take the hit for us. They may have a few broken wings, a few broken feathers, or something like that. But but our guardian angel is taking the hit for us. Huh? Yes, like a mother hen. And you know what? My time is up for tonight. We can keep on talking. But it's up. My time is up for the night. Okay, so that's it. Now she, 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 she knows she said something. I'm going to be writing it down because I have to go home and pray. Oh, yeah. But it's another one, too. Okay. I know it. Okay. okay. Well, we. we who? She's not here. You know, she got to go to Chicago for that funeral. Right. But she's listening and she said she wanted us to pray for her family and for what all the baby to go through with the funeral and everything. Okay. All right, so let's stand up so we can be dismissed.
we just really at the very beginning of this. We still got to, I'm just covering the background scriptures now. So when we start talking about the different kinds of faith, it will make sense. It will make sense to us. Did anybody else ask any prayer requests on there? Just Diane. What'd you say, sister? Mercy and grace on this coming Wednesday, uh, Thursday, next week. Next week? You next week? Yeah. Oh, we'll be traveling next week too. Oh. We're going to Arizona. What did you say? James, James Jackson. Okay. Thank Father you. God, we come to you in the name of Jesus, Lord. We thank you for this Bible study. We thank you for what our ears have heard and hopefully our hearts have felt. We're just trying to study your word so that we can make growing grace in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and understand your word more and understand you more. Because in understanding your word, we will understand you more. And just have, having a closer and more sincere relationship with you. You are our Heavenly Father, and we're just trying to be in accordance and in line with your will. So, Father, I thank you for your anointing on me. I thank you for helping me to discern your word, to know your word, to meditate on your word, to study your word, that I can disseminate it to these, your people. And, Father, I just pray that they're being blessed by it. Now, you've heard the prayer request. We lift up Sister Diane Nicholson and her family as they're getting ready to go for this homegoing service, this funeral, that you give them comfort, that you give them peace. You, We heard that you, uh, Sister Jackson asked for James Jackson. Lord, we pray whatever's going on with him, you know what it's all about, Heavenly Father. And we pray that your will be done in his life. And then you know that Sister Reby is going to be traveling next week, as well as First Lady and myself will be traveling, going to Arizona to see my son and grandson. So, Father, we pray that you give us traveling grace, not only to our destinations, but even giving us traveling grace and bringing us safely back. And wherever we go, and let us be peaceful when we get there in peace while we're there. Oh, in the name of Jesus. And all those who are standing in need, physical healing, mental healing, financial healing, relationship healing, whatever it is they're standing in need of, we're believing right now in the name of Jesus that you're going to grant it. We thank you in advance. We give you praise. We give you honor and we give you glory in Jesus' mighty name. And Satan, we bind you from our hearts and minds. We command you in the name of Jesus. Take your hands off of our blessings. Take your hands off of our family members. Take your hands off of everything that belongs to us. We claim the victory over you right now in the mighty name of Jesus. So, Father, we pray that you dismiss us from this place, but never from your presence. Keep us as an apple to the eye and bring us back at the appointed time. We will be careful to thank you and praise you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Thank God and amen. Amen. So, so I'm praying that every locking the camera. I pray that everybody be blessed. You have a blessed rest of your night and blessed rest of your week. And remember, we love you, but God loves you so much more. Good night. You can turn it off now. Please. I was thinking maybe you could get some idea. Get some idea.